That's right, only Chris I recognize is Tucker. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spilled the tea in DC. So you know these jokes come from a place of love, if in fact that's something I was capable of. Let's start things off in FedEx Field, where Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson Jr. made his season debut yesterday after recovering from being shot. And he came out to the field to many men by 50 Cent, which is a song about getting shot. That's a power move, folks. The only way this could have been any more memorable is if he would have come out to, I'm still alive, I'm still alive. Yeah, if, if you've never seen that video before, you're welcome, or I'm sorry. All right, welcome back, Brian. I'm sorry you had to come back to a loss, but a recovery like this means you're a winner regardless of the final score. And despite a Carson Wentz interception on the one yard line, the one yard line, the one yard line. Did y'all not listen to Richard Sherman the week before? Leave it to the commanders to find a way to mess up the best comeback story in sports. But you know what? I'm going to focus on what's good, which is Brian Robinson being back. That is more important than another late game disappointment, at least. That's, that's what I'm telling myself. I chose this next story because it sounds like a setup to a joke already. A New York man named Calvin Bautista has been charged with smuggling three Burmese pythons across the U.S.-Canadian border. In his pants. Calvin, come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all just going to make me say, is that a snake in your pocket joke on TV? I did not come back from vacation for this. I came back to celebrate turtleneck season. Actually, maybe I came back for this. I'm just glad this story didn't come with pictures. I don't need to see what this looked like. He must have been wearing some 90s MC Hammer pants to even attempt this. Can't touch this. Nobody wants to, bro. According to federal authorities, Calvin is facing a potential maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and a fine of $250,000. That's a lot of time and money for slanging snakes. In your trousers, am I? Am I allowed to say that? I guess I'll find out later. Too late. This can't be the same Calvin who got a part-time job at McDonald's. Let's move on to the next story before I get in trouble. We're headed to a small Canadian town named Cheetle for this next story, where a giant roadside statue of a Cheeto being held in the air is on display until November 4th. Now, I want to judge the statue, but they actually did a good job with everything, especially the Cheetos dust on the fingers, because... Everybody knows that struggle. Besides, DC can't judge. We had the awesome yet creepy The Awakening sculpture in Haynes Point before it finally got moved to National Harbor. Now, I'm shocked that I loved this as a kid. That thing looked like something from a zombie movie. The Awakening gives people nightmares, especially now that it's at National Harbor. Look like somebody just lost their mortgage money. I'll give credit where it's due. This is some really good Cheeto marketing. Every day, somebody drives past this thing and thinks, I could go for some Cheetos. Well played, PepsiCo Foods, and we use the term foods loosely, but this is cool. Let's head to Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey, for this last story, where comedian Ariel Elias was heckled by a Trump supporter and had a beer can thrown at her head while she was on stage performing. I'll tell you the rest of that bit, and then, and then we'll move on. I'm so insecure, I went and got an IED. Oh, oh my God. Oh. And she handled things like a champ, especially when she chugged that beer like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I wouldn't have drank it because whoever threw that might have cooties. But she did destroy those hecklers, so I guess she can do what she wants. Let me make things clear. What those audience members did to Ariel Elias should never happen at a comedy show, or anywhere for that matter. If you're at a comedy show, here are some rules to remember. First of all, do not heckle the comedians, because it's not going to end the way you think. It never does. Next, the show is not about you. Everybody there paid a ticket not to see you. You're not special. Shut your mouth. And don't throw anything or try to go on stage. I shouldn't have to say this since it's, I don't know, a felony, but we just watched the video, so I guess I gotta say it. I blame that so-called club for not stopping things before it even got to that point. If I ever open a comedy spot, 
I'm hiring the scariest bouncers I can find. Nothing but ex-football players and Eastern European strongmen who never smile even when they laugh. You heck on my ass, you'll be trending for all the wrong reasons. Also, my club probably wouldn't last long because I would get sued. But shout out to Ariel Elias for maintaining her composure in a tough situation and continuing the show after a crowd member tried to assault her because that's what it was. My favorite story, Hope Springs Eternal. I got to go with Brian Robinson's return. That was inspiring way more than the game itself.